Hello and welcome everyone to another coding ASMR video and in this one I'm going to be implementing the k-means clustering algorithm as you can see already at the top of my IDE here and I've already downloaded uh, a data set and it's one of the most um, common data sets in machine learning clustering and it's the iris data set and I got it from this website here it just comes up when you google iris data set and then you can download the folder of, with the data and yeah the data set is of flowers and we will see a bit more about the classes and what the data look, looks like but basically you just differentiate between four types of flowers that look fairly similar but are a bit different and you can find groups in them all right let's get started right away i'll first get a terminal and we'll create oops Python 4 is not a thing a Python virtual environment for this project so Python 3 venv and then in the venv folder please and then here we can see we have a venv folder and let's just create a py file that we will probably not use but then I can say that I want to use this virtual environment and now let's create a notebook file again so k means iris ipy and b we can select the virtual environment as a kernel if I click on this data set you can see that it has uh, overall 150 entries they're each on one row and then we have one value comma another value comma another value comma another value comma and then finally what type of flower it is so we have iris setosa and if i go down a bit we have iris versicolor and then we have some iris virginica and then we also have this names file which explains a bit about the data and i will not go through all of this a bit further down it tells us what the attributes are so they are the sepal length in centimeters and the sepal width in centimeters and then the petal length and width in centimeters as well and then like I said the class here so first let's read in the iris.data file and we saw that it's a csv file I don't know why they called it .data would probably be a bit nicer to call it .csv but whatever so for that we will use pandas so import pandas as pd all right now we should have installed everything let's try running this again now it's starting the kernel and yeah we have a check mark right and now importing the data we will just call it iris data what we're importing and then we use pandas read csv and then just the name of the data uh, of the file which is iris.data and then if we then look at the resulting thing we see that um, pandas does this thing where it uh, has some indices that it automatically assigns and it always takes the first line and thinks it's a header 
which is useful if there is actually header information for each column, but in this case it is taking the first entry as the header, which it shouldn't do. So we will say that there is no header and then it should hopefully stop doing that. Yeah, now it's just named those columns 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, which is alright, but not particularly descriptive. So let's get another code cell and let's call this iris data. So let's take this and rename those columns. And we know from the description file that these were the sepal length and the sepal width and the petal length and petal width. And then finally we have the class of the flower. Now if we look at this and if we only want to look at like the first few we can say we want the hat because this is um I don't know if it's set up here. No but this is a pandas data frame object and it has a hat function which will only give us like the first five entries. And now we can see that we actually have a header like sepal length, sepal width, and so on as headers to each column. Alright, I made this a bit smaller because I could not see anything with this big of a font. Right, so now let's look a bit at the data in more detail other than this, the first few lines. And we can use iris data describe for that and it will give us a bit of numerical information. We can see that um, each attribute is in the data set 150 times so there are no missing values or anything but we see that the mean for example is quite different. The sample length is 5.8 centimeters on average and the width only 3 and then the petal is 3.7 and 1.1 and we can also see the standard deviation next line here and the minimum value and maximum value and like uh, the points in between as well. So yeah, that's a bit of that and now let's split the data set and the attributes, so that's the first view that we want to learn from and then the class which tells us the groups that we want the data to be in or yeah for that one we will save the data features by taking the iris data and then dropping so removing a column and we want to remove the column with the class, so only the features remain, and we want it to remove them along axis 1, so that means we will drop a column, or if you want to drop a row, we have to say axis 0. And now let's also look at the head of this one. Yeah, so now it only has four columns, and we of course want to do something similar for the target, so we have this isolated as well. Call this data target. And then we take the iris data and only take the class column. And then again, look at the head. And now it's only telling us iris itosa because they were ordered in the data set that's all right. And now um, let's look at 
what the data looks like visually but uh, we can't just plot it easily because we have four attributes and we can plot a four-dimensional plot so we have to reduce it and I'm not going to go into details but I'll do uh, a principal component analysis here and if you don't know what that is that's totally fine it's just a way a mathematically smart way based on uh, eigenvectors or eigenvalues I believe to reduce the data in dimensions so we can plot it for example in a two-dimensional plot we will use the handy sklearn package so pip install sklearn which stands for scikit-learn and now we can import the PCA component from that so from sklearn decomposition import oh not sklearn import PCA right go back down and now we can do features reduced so this will be our two-dimensional data and we then do the PCA that we just imported and we need to tell it how many uh, dimensions we want in the end and components and let's just say two because we want two dimensions and then do on the result of that do fit and also transform so it will learn and then also yeah apply it to the data that we hand in and we want this to do on the data features let's look at the resulting data so the features reduced shape will be exactly that features reduced to dot shape and then let's also look at the first few entries so features reduced and let's say colon 5 which will give us the first 5 rows and then run this now we see that it uh, has the shape 150 and 2 instead of 4 and now we can see some example entries they should be 0 centered which they weren't before but in this reduced representation they are so now we can plot this and for that I will use the Seaborn library let's import Seaborn as SNS I think that's the most common abbreviation for this library okay we import it and go back down get another code cell and now we can use the scatter plot function and on the x-axis we want the features reduced all um, rows so all data points but only column zero and then on the y-axis we will get features reduced all lines but the second column and then let's plot this let's put a semicolon behind this and now this is the data but we also know which data point belongs to which class and we can use this information to color the points we do this if we supply a hue argument here and this will be um, from our iris data the class or I think I think we also called this the uh, data target, I believe. Yeah, and now we can see.
see all the points, but also uh, to which class they belong. And we see that they are like batched a bit. So like the blue ones are definitely farther away, so they will probably be easy to detect. But then here around the orange and green ones, it's a bit uh, not so clear where the difference is. Like, for example, these orange points here will probably be quite hard to classify correctly. So now that we have looked at the data, let's actually implement the k-means clustering algorithm from scratch. So the first thing I'll do is transform the data to NumPy, because the pandas data frames are not... I don't know. I don't know if I can work the same with them as with NumPy, and I'm very familiar with the NumPy data feature, uh, data format. So let's create a variable called data NumPy and save our data features in it, but in NumPy format. And now let's look at this. Why is it not running? Hello? Okay, now we can see we just have this nice array, or you could call it a matrix, but NumPy calls everything arrays. And it has the shape 150 and 4. So 150 data points, 4 attributes. And now for the algorithm itself, uh, it's called k-means. And the k is a hyperparameter, so that means we can choose it freely. And it will determine how many clusters, so how many groups the algorithm will try to find in the data and well we know for a fact that it's gonna be that three is gonna be the optimal because we know that there are three different classes but typically if you wouldn't know that you would try different case and then see which one performs best then for each cluster you let's go back to the data so for each cluster that you want to find you always have a center point or a reference point to start off. You just choose three random data points and we don't know in which group they will be, but hopefully they will be spread quite nicely, but obviously we can uh, influence that. And then later on, after we have those three reference points, we will go through all the data points and see uh, for each data point, for example for this one, which center will be closest. But yeah, to start with we want to choose three random points because we don't know anything about the data yet. And for that we need NumPy imported, so let's go back up. Let's import NumPy as NP. and break it down and we will need a random number generator with just np random and then the default rng yeah if i could type that would help i was confused why it wasn't suggesting me anything but that explains that okay now we create random cluster centers and let's call them just cluster centers as you do and I'll just save those in the numpy array as well and to start off they will just have zero entries so we have the rough shape already so we want three different ones which is k k different centers and each will have the same amount of features that the data has. So, date and numpy shape, and then the first, or like the entry at index one, which is the second one, 
and that's the four up here. So three, one, three centers with each four attributes like the data. And now we will choose three random ones. And so we go through a loop. K times. And for each one we want a random index from the data set. And we use the random number generator and create a random number at this. Uh, it doesn't describe the method, okay. This will give us a number between 0 and 1, but we want a number between 0 and 149, which will be the data points. So we need to take the result of this times 150. And then we also want this to be an integer, so we will just cast this to int and this will this will not round it. I mean, it, yeah, it will round it, but down, I think. Anyways, it will make an integer, and that's what we need. And then we use this to assign a cluster center, so in the cluster centers array, index i, we want this to be from the data set, the entry at the index that we just determined as random index. Yeah, and we do that for every, uh, for like 0, 1, and 2, so for three groups. And then let's look at the result the centers will be the cluster centers. Let's run this. Yeah, and now we see that we have 4.3311 and 10 and 0 0.1 and 6.1, 2.8, 4.7, 1.2 and 6.5, 3.0, 5.2, 2.0. Okay, let's... Can I do this? I don't know. Now let's try and plot them into this other plot here. I don't know if I can just... scatter plot this together or if I have to create a figure, but we will find out. So on the x-axis... Oh no, I would have to... I would have to take the same PCA that I used previously. Okay, let's go back up and save our PCA instance. Let's not do this in one line. Take this and do it up here. And then we use this instance to fit and transform. And now we can use this instance to also transform our cluster centers. So cluster centers reduced will be the PCA instance and then transform the cluster center. Alright, now let's see if I can plot both of these in the same plot. If I say x is cluster centers reduced and then 0 and y is cluster centers reduced in the first column. 
I all give them style and let's say they should be black which is K a circle mm, I guess not uh, I can see that it shows this this and this point by our random uh, pointer choosing so now uh, let's actually get started assigning the points to these centers because currently uh, they are still colored by the true classes but if we now assign them all to the closest point it will look a bit different let's save the cluster per data point so we want to save for each data point if it's closest to cluster 0, 1 or 2 so again I'll initialize this to 0 and it's the length of data numpy shape and then the first entry which should be the 150 and now we go through the data set so for e in range data numpy shape again the first entry which is the 150 for each of those we want to calculate the distances to each of the centers so for the center in the cluster centers that we created we want to compute the norm which is in numpy.linalg for linear algebra dot norm and we want to calculate this of the distance between or the difference between the i data points so data numpy of i and then the center that we just choose down here so we do this for all three centers and then we get three distances and then we want to see which one is closest so this will be the nearest center and we can find this by using the argmin which will give us the index of the smallest distance in this case and now we save this in our cluster per data point array that we created again add index i and yeah there we save the nearest center and let's just do this and then output the cluster per data point I don't know why it keeps jumping like this run this it assigns the first bunch to cluster 2 and then there are 1s and 2s in here and it's a bit mixed and then the last are almost yeah they're all the same to cluster 0 now let's print these new assignments so we just take the same plot as up here but for our color decision we use this new assignment here so we use the cluster per data point and now this is this weird pastel -y color so let's change that because now it's not using the strings anymore it's using numeric values and then it tries to do some cute stuff which is not particularly great to see on video probably because one of the colors is very light so we can change the palette of this and then I've tried a few but set one was I think yeah that's quite contrasty so we can see that it assigned the clusters like this and we can see a few a bit lost like here are some green ones that should probably not belong to the left cluster and if we compare this again with this one it's quite similar but there are still a few points which are not uh, correct now the next step in the algorithm is to adjust the centers because they are clearly not in the center anymore so we have all the cluster centers and let's save them because we still need them to see how much changed in the last step so we save the whole cluster centers 
by saying cluster centers dot copy and now we can create new cluster centers again with zero initialized and we want k and then data numpy shape one for the four different features and now let's go through all of the clusters by going through the range of k and then we save in the cluster centers at index i the average and i believe there is an average function in numpy yep and now we want to take all of the points that are in the center so we do that by so if we do the cluster per data point this tells us This tells us uh, for each data point in which cluster it is because like for example the first one is in 2, the second one is in 2 and so on. So we, now we can say we want to see where it is equal to 0 for example. Then it tells us uh, false for a bunch of these and true for all of these. And we can use this to index our data set again. So now if we want to see all of the points uh, for which this is true, we just do data numpy and then use this array as an index. And then this will give us all of the date points in data set zero, uh, in cluster zero. And if I say one here, then it will give us the points in cluster one. So we take this and then we can delete the cell again and we use this in here but not with 1 but with i because that's our cluster index and we also need to tell it that we want it to build the average over the rows so x is 0 and then that should be our new cluster centers so let's print the new cluster centers then. Alright, now let's print this with the new cluster centers. Or plot rather. And again we need to reduce them by using our PCA instance. Let's go back down. call them new cluster centers reduced so we can keep the old ones around ok and now we see that we have these x's here in the middle of our data sets and now we see that some of the points are now classified uh, wrongly so to speak because now this red point here in the middle, for example, is definitely closest to the blue center and not to the red center over there anymore. If we look at the old centers, then yeah, they were a bit different because the blue one was all the way up there. And now there should be more points belonging to the blue one if we run everything again. Let's run this just again. I have to... Uh, put everything together at the end but let's just try running this again and then plotting this so yeah now we can see that blue got a lot of new points down here now we can calculate the centers based on this again and then this will be looking like this yeah so we run this again and again until the centers don't change because if the centers don't change then no data points changed groups and then the distribution is completely stable so let's put all the code together all right so i think i've put everything together now we 
have our initialization and we create the random cluster centers, that's all the same. And then so we can plot them, we also apply PCA on them. And then I've uh, set up this loop here. So we want to keep doing everything that we have just programmed. I've just put this in this neat format here. As long as there is a difference between the old cluster centers and the current cluster centers. And for that to work, we need to initialize the old cluster centers at the start, which don't exist, so I just put them to zero and then they will always have a difference for it to run the first time around. And then we can always check if they change. So if we run this now, we can plot the end result, which is this. And we can also count setup and iteration counter and then we can delete this one. And then we can increase the iteration counter in each uh, loop and then at the end we can say finished iteration counter iterations let's run this again So we did seven iterations in total, and then the end result was this, and you can see that it sometimes fails a bit, because if the random initialization has two on the left side, it will try to find some uh, random groups in this one group over here, which is not ideal. Yeah, and then sometimes we get the ones that we're used to. But I'll not go into how to optimize this. Uh, I think this is quite enough for one video. And maybe if there is interest, I'll do some more uh, clustering in the future. There are quite a few more advanced uh, clustering algorithms that I want to study and brush my knowledge up on. And maybe we'll talk a bit about how to decide if your algorithm is performing well. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!